Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to our first early chapter book read along for the summer. We did this last summer and it seemed pretty popular so we're bringing it back again for this summer. Early chapter read along is where we read an early chapter book and it is for our readers that are moving into reading on their own or they can sit and listen to a book for a little longer. So this week we are reading Sadiq and the Perfect Play, and this is by Simon Norali. Sadiq and the Perfect Play. Sadiq and the Perfect Play by Simon Norali. Norali. Hi, I'm Sadiq. My family and I live in Minnesota, but my parents are from Somalia. Sometimes we speak Somali at home. I'd like you to meet my family and learn some interesting facts and terms from our culture. Here is Hoyo, Baba, Norali, Alia, Amina, and Reina. Somali people come from many different clans. Many Somalis are nomadic. That means they travel from place to place. They search for food, water, and land for their animals. Somalia is mostly desert. It doesn't rain often there. The camel is an important animal to Somali people. Camels can survive a long time without food or water. Around 99% of all Somalis are Muslim. Chapter 1, Singing Surprise. It was a Saturday afternoon during spring break. Sadiq, Zaza, and Manny were bored. They had played video games all morning in the basement. Upstairs, Sadiq's big sister, Aliyah, was singing. She had been singing for at least 20 minutes. It was getting annoying. Ugh, she's been singing forever, groaned Zaza. Why is she singing, asked Manny. Sadiq sighed. She's in a musical next week. She's been practicing. The boys were tired of playing video games. They decided to go upstairs. Salam, everyone, Sadiq called as he entered the living room. Salam, boys, said Baba. Why don't you sit with us? We can watch Aaliyah practice for her part in Annie. Sadiq, Manny, and Zaza glanced at one another. They didn't really want to watch Aaliyah, but they knew they didn't have a choice. They sat on the couch. Sadiq was sure he would find his sister singing annoying, but as she started her next song, she sounded great. The sun will come out tomorrow, Aaliyah sang. When she finished the song, she took a bow. You're really good, Hoyo said to her. That was a great performance, Aaliyah, said Baba. Thank you, Baba, replied Aaliyah. I've been working really hard to hit the right notes. So good, Reina, shouted Reina, clapping. Singing, shouted Amina while turning in a circle. Your mom is right, Zaza whispered to Sadiq. I couldn't tell earlier because we were so far away, but Aaliyah sounds really good. I wish I was in a play too, said Manny. It looks like a lot of fun. Me too, replied Sadiq. We, we, we've never had a play at school, said Zaza sadly. What if we started our own theater club, asked Sadiq. That's a great idea, Sadiq, said Zaza. You will need a director, Aaliyah chimed in. She was listening to them talk. I would volunteer, but I'm too busy with my role in Annie. What does a director do, Sadiq asked. The director makes the decisions, Aaliyah said. He or she is in charge of telling people where to go on stage. Sometimes they assign roles and find costumes. That sounds fun, said Sadiq. I will volunteer to be the director of our play. Cool, said Zaza. What should we call our club? How about the Friends Theater Club, asked Manny. Awesome, said Sadiq. He couldn't wait to get started as the director of the perfect play. The next morning, Zaza and Manny met Sadiq at his house. They went outside and walked toward the park. As they got close to the swings, they saw three of their friends. Hi, Sadiq called. Hi, guys, replied Grayson, Zara, and Danny. We're starting a theater club. Do you want to join? asked Zaza. What will you do? Danny asked. We're putting on a play. I just thought of it yesterday, said Sadiq. We all thought of it, said Manny. He scrunched up his nose. What play should we do? asked Zaza. How about the three little pigs? asked Manny. 
Ew, Sadiq laughed. Who wants to wear a pig costume? What about the princess and the pea? asked Danny. It's the story of a lost girl who goes to a castle. A prince lives at the castle. He has been looking for a princess to marry, but he has not found anyone. The girl says she is a princess, but no one believes her. How does she convince them? Zara asked. The prince's mother, the queen, puts a pea under 20 mattresses to test her. Danny said. If the girl feels the pea while she sleeps, she must be a princess. That sounds like a great story for a play, said Zaza. What other characters are there? There's a king, an announcer, and a court jester too, said Danny. It has the perfect number of parts for our club. Let's vote, said Zaza. We can choose between the three little pigs and the princess and the pea. I've decided we should do the princess and the pea. We will perform it here in the park, said Sadiq. But we didn't vote, started Manny. I'll say who will play each part, Aaliyah said. That's, Aaliyah said that's the director's job, said Sadiq. But Sadiq, we should all choose which part we like, said Zaza, frowning. The director of the play gets to, gets to decide, Sadiq said. Manny looked at Zaza and shook his head sadly. I would really like to be the princess, said Danny. That's fine, but I will choose who plays the other parts, said Sadiq. I would like to be the queen, said Zara. Can I be the court jester, asked Manny. No, Zaza will be the jester because he's silly, said Sadiq. Zara will be the queen, Grayson will be the king. Manny, you can be the announcer. You'll tell the king and queen who is coming to visit. That leaves me to be the prince. But I want to be the jester, said Manny. Zaza is the jester, said Sadiq. He put his hands on his hips. Danny stared at Sadiq. Why do you get to be the director and the prince, she asked. That doesn't seem fair. We have six characters in the play. There are six of us. We each play a part, Sadiq said simply. Anyway, let's meet at my house tomorrow and plan. Manny looked upset. The rest of the kids didn't know what to say. They nodded and started walking back to their homes. Chapter 2, Building the Set The Friends Theater Club gathered at Sadiq's house on Monday for their next meeting. Sadiq held a notebook and pencil in his lap. Okay, what will we need for the play, he asked. We have to build a set and find props to use, said Zaza. We need a script, Danny said. We also need costumes, said Manny. I have some princess gowns. My sister and I used them last Halloween, said Zara. Sadiq scribbled in his notebook. Can you guys slow down, he asked, frowning. I can't answer and write at the same time. My dad is a carpenter, said Grayson. I can ask if he'll help us build the set. That would be great, Grayson, Zara said. The kids continued to plan their perfect play. They went on Neruli's computer and found a script. Then they printed out copies on Baba's printer. They ran through their lines. After a while, Hoyo called Sadiq. It was time for dinner and the rest of the club to go home. Later that night, Grayson called Sadiq. My dad said you guys can come over tomorrow, Grayson said. We can start building the set. He said it has enough, he said he has enough supplies for it. Awesome, Sadiq said. See you tomorrow. Hi kids, said Mr. Cedarstrom when the club arrived at Grayson's the next day. How can I help you today? Everyone looked at Sadiq as they walked into the garage. I, I'm not sure, said Sadiq. I made a list of what we need for our set. Let's take a look at it, Mr. Cedarstrom said. Sadiq handed him the list. Castle walls, throne, a door, tables, decorations, Mr. Cedarstrom read. That all seems simple enough. Sadiq smiled. He was glad to have some help. Should we start on the castle? Oh, he started. Sadiq, how many people will come to see the play? Interrupted Manny. Sadiq didn't reply. He wanted to finish what he was saying. He took a breath and asked Mr. Cedarstrom, Should we start on the castle walls and then make the door? That sounds like a good plan, Mr. Cedarstrom said. He gathered wood from behind his workbench. Zaza and Manny, could you please help me with this? Zaza and Manny agreed. Then Mr. Cedarstrom showed Grayson an old door he had at the back of his workshop. Maybe you can use this on your set, he said. Can I paint it blue? Grayson asked the group. 
He held up a can of paint he'd found. No, the door has to be red, said Sadiq. Okay, said Grayson. He searched the workshop for red paint. Zara and Danny, can you help me paint? The girls agreed. Mr. Cedarstrom went back to the workbench. He asked Zaza and Manny for help measuring the wood pieces. Sadiq put down his notebook and went to help too. They helped Mr. Cedarstrom measure and sand the wood. Then they helped him glue the walls together. Grayson, Zara, and Danny painted the door. When they were done, there was still plenty to do. Sadiq and Manny made posters. They would hang them around the neighborhood to get people to come to the play. Zara and Danny made crowns for the queen, king, and prince out of cardboard. Zaza and Grayson collected old furniture from around the workshop. They found chairs, tables, and decorations to use on set. When it was time to go home, Sadiq reminded everyone to practice their lines. We'll go over them tomorrow at our first rehearsal, he said. Chapter 3, Rehearsals. The next day, the group met in Sadiq's basement to practice. Does everyone have their costume? asked Sadiq. At first, nobody answered. We thought you were in charge of that, said Manny. Why? asked Sadiq, looking confused. Because you've been in charge of everything else, said Zaza. You haven't listened to any of our, de of our ideas, added Manny. Fine, mumbled Sadiq. I will figure out the costumes, but right now let's practice. Does everyone have a script? The club members nodded. Great, we can go through our lines. Grayson, you and I will sit here, said Sadiq. He pointed to two chairs in the middle of the room. Zaza, as the jester, you'll be silly and make us laugh. Zaza nodded and got into position. Manny, you will stand by the door, said Sadiq. You'll blow a trumpet to get everyone's attention. Is there a trumpet I can use, asked Manny. Sadiq shook his head. Not yet, you will have to pretend for now. Do I get a jester hat, asked Zaza. Not right now. We have to find our spots first, said Sadiq. Sadiq, should I sit next to Grayson? asked Zara. Just a second, Zara, said Sadiq. He turned to Danny and pointed to the corner. You can stand here until Manny announces you. What line should I practice? asked Manny. Sadiq walked back to Manny. Your lines start here, he said. He pointed to the script. Zara, you sit next to Grayson, said Sadiq. But where? asked Zara. Your chairs will be next to each other, said Sadiq. He moved another chair to the center of the room. Sadiq, Zara started. What? shouted Sadiq. He stomped his foot. Do I have to do everything? Everyone went quiet. Then Zara spoke up. I want to go home, she said. That was really mean, Sadiq, said Zaza quietly. You were all talking to me. You were all asking for help at the same time, said Sadiq, pouting. I'm going home, said Manny. Me too, said Danny. She was holding Zara's hand. Without another word, Sadiq's friends all left. Sadiq was alone. He slumped into, onto a chair. Why do I have to do everything, he huffed. After a few minutes, Baba came downstairs. What happened to our famous actors, he asked. Sadiq didn't answer. Baba put a hand on Sadiq's shoulder. Is everything okay, Sadiq? I have to think about the set. I have to figure out the costumes, Sadiq said, his voice rising. And now everyone's mad at me. Did you ask for help, asked Baba. No, replied Sadiq. Aaliyah said the director makes all the decisions. It sounds like you could use some help, said Baba. Why don't you talk to your friends? Maybe, Sadiq said. Things will seem better tomorrow, after you get rest. Bill Kiga. Let's see if I pronounced that correctly. That was at the beginning. Ah, it's Wilkega, Wilkega, which means my son. Let's go eat dinner. Yes, Baba, said Sadiq, but he didn't believe it. How will I direct the perfect play, thought Sadiq. He dragged his feet as he followed his father upstairs. Chapter four, Aaliyah's musical. The next day, Sadiq was in his room when, he, when a thought came to him. I need to ask Hoyu for help with the costumes. Sadiq walked to his parents' bedroom. I need help, Hoyu, he said. What can I help you with? There's another word that is in bold. Let's see, is it Calbi? 
Let's go to the front and find out. Ah, Colby, Colby, my heart. I don't have costumes for our play, Sadiq explained, or anything else. We still need a trumpet and a bed for the set. I don't know how I'll get it all done. Well, right now we have to go see your sister perform in her musical, said Hoyo. But Hoyo, I have a lot to do, said Sadiq. Do you remember what this word was? Let's go back and look. Colby. Colby, you've known about your sister's musical. She'll be very sad if you don't come, said Hoyo. But if I don't get all these things done, the play will be ruined, said Sadiq. I don't want to let my friends down. Sadiq, it's important to keep our promises. We can talk when we get back, okay? Okay, Hoyo, said Sadiq, looking down. Sadiq and his family arrived at the theater. People were already in their seats. The curtains were drawn across the stage. Soon the lights were turned down. This is a great turnout, whispered, ba whispered Baba. Yes, said Hoyo. How exciting. A man came on stage. Welcome, he said into the microphone. My name is John Anderson. I am the director of Valley Street Community Theater. Thank you for coming. We hope you enjoy our production of Annie. The curtains went up. The stage came into view. In front, there were four untidy beds. Several girls gathered around them. Sadiq could see Aliyah standing beside one of the beds. The musical began. Sadiq was excited. The other kids were good singers, but he thought Aliyah was the best. I wonder where they got the beds, thought Sadiq. He nodded along to the music. We need a bed for our princess in the play. Before Sadiq knew it, the play had ended. Everyone stood up to cheer. Sadiq's family went to find Aliyah. The twins jumped up and down and called for Aaliyah. Finally, they spotted her in the crowd and ran to her. Wonderful job, Aaliyah, Hoyo said. You did great, Sadiq said. He hugged his sister. The director came over to introduce himself. You must be Aaliyah's family, he said. It's nice to meet you all. I just wanted to say that Aaliyah is very talented. She has been a joy to direct. Oh, thank you, said Baba and Hoyo together. This is Norali, Sadiq, Raina, and Amina. Oh, I'm sorry, I think that's Rainia and Amina, said Baba. Sadiq recently formed a theater club with his friends. They'll be putting on the Princess and the Pea soon. Fantastic! How is that going? asked Mr. Anderson. Not very well, replied Sadiq. Nobody knows their lines. I still have to figure out our costumes and props. I'm the director. I have to do it all myself. Theater directors aren't in charge of everything. You can't do it all by yourself, said Mr. Anderson. Part of being a director is learning how to delegate. What does delegate mean? asked Sadiq. It means you ask for help. You can ask your friends to do certain tasks, said Mr. Anderson. Do you do that? asked Sadiq, his eyes going wide. Mr. Anderson smiled. Of course, I won't be able to do it all by my on, on my own. A set designer is in charge of the set. There is a costume designer who puts together all the costumes. Thank you, Mr. Anderson, said Sadiq. I can't wait to ask my friends for help. Chapter five, help arrives. When Sadiq got home from Aaliyah's play, he called his friends. The club agreed to meet at the park the next day. I'm sorry for being mean, Sadiq said when his friends arrived. I should have asked for help. Instead, I was trying to do everything myself. We didn't think you wanted help, said Zaza. Manny nodded. You wanted to do everything. You got really bossy, said Zaza. I am sorry, said Sadiq sadly, looking down. I wanted the play to be perfect. I thought directors needed to do it all, but I, but I need help. Could someone take care of the costumes? I'll see what my ha sister has in her dress up bin, Danny said. Zara can help me. My dad said he can help with the rest of the set pieces, said Grayson. I can ask my brother for his trumpet, said Manny. Zaza and I will try to find other props too. Thank you, said Sadiq. I didn't know putting on a play would be so hard. 
We don't mind helping, Sadiq, said Manny. Zara nodded. Next time we can all agree on a plan from the start. Thank you, said Sadiq. You guys are awesome. He gave them each a hug. Okay, he said after a moment. Now let's start practicing. Zara and Grayson, you're over here. Danny, don't come in until Manny announces you. Now that he had some help, Sadiq enjoyed directing the play. Manny, you will have to be really loud when you're announcing the princess, said Sadiq. Manny held a stick up to his face. He pretended it was the trumpet. He pursed his lips to blow. They practiced until everyone knew their lines. I think we should go home. We need to get started on the other tasks, said Danny. Yes, you are right, said Sadiq. We have a lot of work to do before Sunday. Thank you all for helping me. That's what friends are for, said Zaza. He crossed his eyes and made faces at Sadiq. Sadiq laughed. You really are the court jester, Zaza. Chapter 6. Showtime. The theater club was finally going to present their play to the neighborhood. Sadiq, are these the sleeping pads you wanted to use? asked Baba. Yes, Baba, replied Sadiq. Do you have a pee? asked Norali. I'm using one of my marbles, replied Sadiq. Where are the rest of your set pieces? asked Baba. Mr. Cedarstrom has most of them, Sadiq said. He will bring them to the park. Thank you, Baba. When Sadiq got to the park with his family, everyone was there. Mr. Cedarstrom was putting up the set pieces. The kids went to help him. He had let them borrow camping chairs. Zara and Danny had put gold wrapping paper around them. They wanted to make them look like thrones. The kids placed the thrones on the set. Many neighbors had come to the park to watch the play. Sadiq could hear people talking and laughing. He started to feel nervous. The kids took their positions. Sadiq went to the front to introduce their play. Hello, everyone, he said. Welcome to our play, The Princess and the Pea. The audience clapped and cheered, but they quickly went quiet so the play could start. King Grayson, Queen Zara, and Prince Sadiq were on stage. They discussed Prince Sadiq's quest to marry a real princess. Father, said Prince Sadiq, I have searched all over the kingdom. I have not found a real princess to marry. They are either too short or too tall, too quiet or too loud. Some have no manners at all. What am I to do? Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Manny, the announcer, entered the scene. He blew his trumpet. Then he announced loudly, There is a young woman at the door. She says she's a real princess. We will test if she's honest, said Queen Zara. Sadiq peeked out of the corner of his eye. The audience was smiling and enjoying themselves. Finally, the play came to an end. The cast of friends moved to the front and bowed. There was clapping and whistling. People shouted, Bravo! Once the cheering died down, Sadiq spoke up. We would like to thank you for coming to see our play. I also want to thank my friends on stage. They practice a lot. They also helped with the set and costumes. Everyone clapped again for the theater club. Then the audience members got up from their seats. Here you go, Sadiq, said Aaliyah, walking up to him. She handed her brother a bunch of flowers. These are from all of us. You and the club did a wonderful job. That was great, Calby. Did we say that right? Let's go back to the front and check. Colby. That was great, Colby, said Hoyo. Baba nodded. They each gave him a hug. Sadiq beamed. You really think so? he asked. Yes, but not as great as my performance in Annie. My musical was the best ever, Aaliyah said. Sadiq playfully stuck his tongue out at his sister. He knew that the Friends Theater Club had put on the perfect play. The end. That was Sadiq and the Perfect Play by Saman Norali. This was published by Picture Window Books. I hope that you enjoyed the first early chapter book read-along of the summer, and I hope you will join me for next week's. Bye for now!